Now let's understand firewalls and firewall D. Uh, let's start with what is a firewall. Before we dive into firewall D, let's start with the basics. Again, what exactly is a firewall? A firewall is a security system that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic. Think of it as a security guard standing at the door of your computer network. This guard decides who can enter and leave based on the rules you set. Without a firewall, your system is wide open to external threats like hackers, malicious software, or even accidental misconfigurations. Now let's move on to Firewall D. In OpenSUSE Linux, Firewall D is the default firewall management tool. It's more flexible and modern than traditional firewall management systems like IP tables. The key feature of Firewall D is that it allows dynamic rule updates. This means you can change firewall settings on the fly without needing to restart your system or services. This is particularly useful for systems that need to stay online, such as servers or any system where downtime is costly. Firewall D offers some powerful features like dynamic firewall. You don't need to restart the firewall to apply changes. Zone based control allows for easy configuration of different levels of security for different network interfaces. Rich rules, advanced users can define more complex rules for filtering traffic. Integration with services. Many services come with their own firewall rules, which can be applied instantly when that service is activated. In Firewall D, traffic control is based on the concept of zones. A zone defines a level of trust for incoming connections on a network. Each zone has a set of rules that determine which traffic is allowed and which is blocked. Let's explain some of the zones and how they could be used in real life scenarios. We have the zone drop. This is the most restrictive zone. All incoming traffic is dropped with no notification to the sender. Our going traffic is allowed. This zone can be useful in uh, if your computer is connected to an uh, untrusted network like a public Wi-Fi in a cafe. Block zone. All incoming traffic is rejected and the sender is notified. Use this when you want to make it clear that your system is not accepting connections. The public zone. This zone is for systems that connect to public networks like the internet. You don't trust the network completely, so only a minimal amount of incoming traffic is allowed. Think of this as the default zone for most users. And the home zone for trusted networks such as your home Wi-Fi. Here you might allow more services like file sharing between devices. Uh, internal zone. Use this for internal networks such as private office networks where you trust the devices and want to allow more open communication. Lastly, trusted zone, the, la the least restrictive zone. All incoming and outgoing connections are allowed. Be careful when using this zone. It should only be used on very secure, fully trusted networks. To check uh, which zone your uh, network interface is currently using, run the following command, uh, sudo firewall d cmd firewall cmd and get active zones and it will show you the active zones right now and docker is from the previous video about uh, docker and we are using the public zone 
So this command will show you the zones that are active and the interfaces assigned to each. Typically, your Ethernet or Wi-Fi connection will be mapped to one of these zones, the one we mentioned before. Um, so let's move forward. Let's walk uh, through an example. Imagine you are uh, setting up a laptop at home connected to your Wi-Fi. You trust this network, so you want to use the home zone. Uh, first, you can see which zone your interface is currently using, as we did before. Uh, if it is not set to the home zone, you can change it with the following uh, command by doing firewall cmd and zone equal home. And we can change, okay, for the interface. ETH1 and if you are using Wi-Fi you can replace the ETH1 with the wireless uh, it, like commonly the name will be WLAN 0 and you hit enter and if we check again now for the interface Ethernet 1 it's in home now and if I want to change it back, okay, I can come here and do public as it was before. Okay, and if we check, it's again to the public. So here, as we said, it will be the name of the network interface. And you can replace this with the name of your actual interface. Uh, now the changes is not permanent so make sure that while you are running the command to add this uh, permanent and after that like let's run it now let's do okay we leave it like that permanent setting zone to public okay so and after you finish you should run this reload okay so let's say we run this and you change it other things using firewall cmd okay so when you finish all what you are doing you can run something else that it's runtime to permanent all the changes you did it will make it permanent and it will do reload this ensures that every time you connect to your home, Wi-Fi, or the same Ethernet, the correct zone will be applied. Okay. Before moving to the next point, which is allowing a service in a zone, I would like to recap what have been said before. That when we run this command, sudo firewall, okay, cmd, um, get active zones, it will show you the active zones now. And we already moved the Ethernet one to be under this zone, to be controlled by this zone, which is home. And we have the default one, the public. So any device left behind will be under this zone, which is the public, the default one. You can change the default zone for your entire system by specifying that using the firewall cmd and to do that you can go ahead and do set default zone and you write the default zone for your system it might be home drop any of the zones we listed before okay so the zone can be uh, controlling every single device you have on your system by default okay or you can specify a zone specifically for or a particular device on your system. Like you can have two Ethernets, one under the control of the zone home or drop, and the other one you can leave it to be controlled by public, or you can put both of them, each of them, in a different completely zone than the default one. So if you run this, list all it will give you 
the parameters for the default zone the the default active zone right now like that so let's say i would like to know about the parameters or the active zone now which is home that we put the ethernet under its control you can do that by uh, info zone and the name of the zone it will show you the same uh, look like the other one and we will see here that we have the interface under the control okay so zones can be uh, for everything or you can specify it for a single device or you can put each single device in a different zone depends on your system maybe you have a big uh, server or a big desktop with many ethernets and you can put each one in a different zone according to the needs uh, so let's say uh, now that we have our interface in the home zone let's say you want to allow ssh so you can access this laptop remotely from another device in your uh, house you can easily enable the ssh uh, service within the home zone and to do that sudo firewall cmd and you specify the zone which is home and add service ssh okay and don't forget the permanent and after you run that don't forget the reload so the permanent flag ensures that this change persists after a reboot the reload command is used to apply changes without disrupting existing connections uh, you can after that run the info and you will see that ssh has been there added to the zone so you can ssh to your system if this ethernet under the control of that uh, of that zone here this command list services will list the defined services for the default uh, uh, for the default zone uh, let's say you want to know about all the services that predefined coming with the firewall you run this command get services and it's a long list and from there you can pick the service that you want to allow on your zone that you assign the ethernet device for it for more advanced users uh, con uh, firewall d supports rich rules uh, which allow for more granular control for example let's allow http traffic but only from a specific ip address like here i will check my ip okay so i know the other ip will be dot 50 to allow http traffic but only from a specific ip address this one not not this one this ip one six eight dot one two two dot fifty so i will allow traffic only from this ip to come to my machine using rich rules so in order to do that sudo firewall cmd and we have to specify the zone and here it is home and add rich rule and between single quotes and here don't forget the permanent and let's write our rule it has to start with the word rule family double quotes ip version 4 and then you specify the uh, be careful with the typing source address and equal one six eight one fifty and after that you after the fifty here again double quotes okay and the service 
the name of the service equal double quote http let's maximize this so http okay and at the end accept so now press enter and don't forget the sudo firewall pmd reload so let's clean this and sudo firewall pmd info zone home and we shall see the rules adding here for the zone so now this rule only allows the computer with the ip address 192.168.122.50 to access the http service on this machine to make sure your firewall is functioning correctly you can use logs to monitor what's happening uh, firewall d integrates with the system's logging service which in this case the system d uh, to check the firewall logs, you can use sudo journal control dash u and firewall firewall d and you press enter and from here you can monitor your firewall okay and we have some uh, warnings uh, so this command will show you the events related to firewall d such as block traffic or services that were allowed 